again. It is Wing Nation presented by Hercules Tires right on our strength. Talking sprint car racing. Our favorite time of the week, and we are so glad that you have joined us. Aaron Evernham and Steve Post, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm fantastic. You got to go to the race? I got to go to the All-Stars two weeks ago. I got to go to USCS last week, and I'm going to the World of Outlaws this weekend. Oh. Cha-ching, baby, and this is April. Not even uh. the, it's not even the hashtag sprint car summer yet. Oh, and you wait to hear about my sprint car summer. Oh. I'm going to some places this year. Wow, look at you. Oh, yeah, I've been pent up with all this COVID stuff. Pent up. Pent up, pent up energy. Time to go. Time to get out there and get going. So uh, it's good. Everything good in your world? Yeah, we're good. Good. I was a lot of streaming this weekend. Boy, there was a lot going on, wasn't there? Yeah. I watch it from the comfort of my living room, but you know what? I'm, I'm tuned in. There you go. Saturday, um, because Port and Lincoln went early, I went yeah. out to dinner after the, uh, the, the, the shower I got on Pit Road at Talladega with the downpour hat. Uh, went back and out to dinner, but Saturday I got to watch IRA. Um, at um, Beaver Dam, uh, the Bill Baylog show. Yep. I got to watch Austin McCarl win at Knoxville, and I got to watch uh, Shane Golubic win the Sprint Car Challenge Tour. Wow, you caught in, a little more Petaluma. than I did. I caught, yeah, I caught yeah. three. Well, on Sunday, I had the, the uh, Sprint Cars on from Bristol, World of Outlaws, and I went to Kate's Lacrosse, and I came home, and it was, Talladega was on, and no offense, but I'm like, whoa, 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 this is the TV. I'm set up on Ray. Come on now. I'm fighting. I'm fighting yeah, right we're there. fighting over. I'm like, Crystal Sprint Cars, Sprint Cars. <laughs> Ninja. He's a racing ninja. Yeah, that's so, what he um, calls himself. Uh, racing ninja. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He self declared because we, we had some arguments this we weekend. We saw how that worked. Well, he's a three hundred five winner. So he, he, he is. He is. So, yeah, absolutely. So, so, anywho, yeah, we had a little battle over this oh, streaming. Boy. But we had a lot of streaming, and yeah. we're, and and it's it's some good stuff out there. There's great racing going on. That's for sure. Let's get into our Hefter Racing Products hot topics. Um, we're going to talk about the Bristol Throwdown. David Gravel is one of our guests on the show. Yeah. But, Aaron, when they announced last year they were going to put dirt on Bristol, like, huh, what's this going to be? Yeah. What's this going to look like? And when you look like, I think it's the last six weeks or seven weeks, the Bristol Dirt Nationals where they had 8,762 cars or something yeah. like that, 1,400 cars, the NASCAR weekend with the trucks and cup, the World of Outlaw Late Models of the UMP Modifieds, and this weekend World of Outlaw Sprint Cars and Super Dirt Car Series Modifieds, um, they're they're tearing the dirt up, but they they're they going to do it again next year. Yeah. I think they're onto something. Yeah. And when you look at the amount of attention in the last six weeks on dirt racing, mm-hmm. it's been probably unlike Ever. maybe maybe when the trucks went to Eldora, comparable to that, but not even that. Well, that was just one weekend. Yeah, yeah. exactly. This has been if you've been a, if you're an oval track fan, you virtually somebody you know has been running at Bristol. Yeah, and this is one of the most famous. Track, tracks yes, in, exactly. in America, and then you put dirt on it. Yeah. They um they knocked it out with this thing. They, did. they knocked it out. I was a little skeptical of, oh, of we a all lot were. of it. I think the world of Allahs did a nice job managing the surface Me too. for the speed thing. We were concerned about Sammy's 185 miles per hour. Um, there was a lot of concern about parts. There was uh there there was uh, there was concern some on social media, a lot behind the scenes. Yeah. I think the world of Outlaws uh, making that track a little bit uh, drier. And slicker, slowing yep. down the speeds, and and I'm uh, while I love high speed, I sometimes think slower speed makes better racing. Yeah, and um, so but, who knows? Uh, with that being said, on Sunday that qualifying oh, was so man. like I I haven't been that tuned into yeah. qualifying in well, a forever. Sam Hayford, yeah, man, he was just. I mean, when it looks that fast on TV, yeah, not even Sam, being there. Jeez, yeah, God, Sam, old old. Uh, Old gonna go back to gonna go back to ASCS Sam. I don't think he needs to with the speed. And he's had speed all year too. Yeah, yeah. He just he's, he's to, he he, he's getting he told it together me, now. He yeah. told me that at Scriven that the tires are so different that he his he's good with the car, the equipment. It's the racecraft and what they need to yeah. do with racing thirty laps, twenty five thirty laps. So, but boy, I'm telling you what, they got the speed in that bad boy, don't they? Yes, they do. Woo, man. So uh, yeah, so we're gonna talk to David Gravel. We're also gonna talk to Lucas Wolf, who picked up a big win. It's been two years since Lucas has won yeah, at Williams Grove, I so that. looking forward to that. So looking forward to that. Um, one of the things I love, um, I love Western Pennsylvania, and I, I really like what's happening there because um, we went through a phase where there was a lot of racing, and then we went through a phase where really you had Lernerville. Um, Mercer went away. Sharon jumped in and yeah. took some of the slack. Bedford, Tri-County, Thunder, Thunder Mountain, they all grabbed the it looks like most weekends in Western Pennsylvania, it's going to be three nights yeah. of racing. 
and uh, this past weekend, and then and then the names and the faces and the families that are so part of the rich history of once in Pennsylvania. Lernerville, Cy Lynch picked up yeah. the win. Mercer it was Adam Kekich and uh, AJ Flick picked up the win. And it's like nothing says Western Pennsylvania like those three guys yeah. do. And uh, they've got a big speed week coming up in June. I've looked at that thing. I'm I can't make it work, and I'm so frustrated uh, because I wanted to go up to that, but it's just. There's just so much going on, and that's a weekend where it's like I I don't need so much going on that weekend. Yeah. I need so little going on that weekend because the rest of the year gets crazy. So, uh, but I love Western Pennsylvania and some great winners up there. We mentioned Lucas Wolf won Williams Grove. Brent Marks, wow, what a story! And we are going to talk to Brent on our podcast coming up on yeah. Thursday um, about that win at Sealings Grove and all that's going on with them. One that I watched was Bill Baylog winning the IRA. Austin McCarl. Very emotional win for Austin. You say yeah. winning at Knoxville, but it's his own car. It's his own deal. He put his mm-hmm. own deal together because he has the deal with Tarleton to run the King of the West series. Yep. So he's not going to be a regular at Knoxville. So he's not going to have a regular ride there. So he put his own deal together and went out and whooped everybody. Yeah. And so that was good to see. And then I was at USCS, and it was a Ricky Stenhouse Jr. weekend down there. Um, he's got that car rolling. I um, guess. Yeah. Uh, Ricky's deal is so cool to me because in, 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 in those of you that know Ricky's story, a uh, kid from Mississippi, his dad built sprint car engines, dad builds a car for him. He goes, he wins here. He gets a little bit bigger. He wins here, but, but him and dad did it together. And then they get the attention of Tony Stewart and they run USAC. And then that comes to NASCAR. And he wins a couple of Xfinity series championships, cup series. He's won some cup wins. And I just love the fact that Ricky, A, still owns co-owner Sheldon's car, so I love that he stays involved with sprint cars, but he wasn't content being just involved. He wanted to drive, and he's carved out this little 360 team, and him and his dad work on it, and it's a father-son team, and they they are so cool working together because they're both so hands-on. Ricky's, you know, airing up tires and slinging tires, and they're both tuning on the engine because they both, and and I know a lot of NASCAR drivers, that are hands-on guys are frustrated. They can't touch the car there. Yeah. He can touch this one. And then to go out and win. And um, I talked to Ricky a little bit on Sunday. He's starting to feel pretty good about himself as a sprint car driver. And he said, he said he wanted to run a lot this year to try to get the, the sprint car skill set back. And he's doing it. The NASCAR schedule works out well because a lot of times we're just doing the one-day shows. Yeah. So they fly in. This yeah. one is across the street. Okay. But so the one day shows so he can get more races in. So this has really worked out well for Ricky. Um, you know, it's not for me to say, but he seems like he's in a really happy place yeah. with his, uh, with everything, but with his racing, it seems like, and, and he won both nights. Um, he was, he was strong on Friday night, lap traffic. He got caught in lap traffic. And just as things were about to get interesting, someone stopped on the racetrack and he had open air. He said the car was even better on Saturday night, and it wasn't. So, uh, so Rick Stenhouse Jr. picked up the win. So neat stuff, yeah, for sure. Lots and lots of cool things, for sure. And lots and lots of cool things. You know, if you're a racing person, just go to hrpracing.com and Dreamlist and, 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 and look at their website. Their website is absolutely amazing. I was in Ricky's truck up at USCS and looking at all the yeah. HRP stuff he has in there. And it boggles my mind and stuff that I am not a racing person, okay? So, but if you're a racing person who's trying to organize a shop or a truck or parts and pieces or the the mule or whatever it is, just go on their website and check it out. Aaron, it's easy to shop the entire line of Hefner Racing products. It really is. Go to hrpracing.com and from your desktop or right on your phone. And first time online orders, use promo code MRN at checkout for 10% off. Okay, so just do that. Just order up your entire shop, all of your stuff for the shop. And they have, like, ways to organize everything, like oil bottles and everything. I was looking at this stuff. I was looking at at all the trailers there, and there's HRP stuff everywhere. Yeah. And they just, they just, they do a great job. So hrpracing.com, that's hrpracing.com. We talked about Bristol, about this $25,000 pass for cash. Bristol Throwdown, an awesome energy you drink, World of Outlaws, Sprint Cars. It is, uh, it is uh, David Gravel and Logan <laughs> Shuhart. Here's John Gibson with the call on Dirt Vision. And now for the Dry Dean Death Defying Move of the Week, where one driver simply amazes us with their on-track moves. 
Logan Shuart to the low side. The car gets a little crossed up. An opportunity for David Gravel to the inside down the back straightaway. New leader David Gravel as they race to the white flag. That death-defying move was brought to you by Dry Dean Diesel All Death, the official death of the world of outlaws and wheelmen everywhere. Visit drydean.com for more information. For decades, Drydeen Lubricants has been made in America and made to last, paving the way on our highways, in our fields, and on the production line. Today, Drydeen offers a complete line of engine oils, greases, hydraulic and transmission fluids, and diesel exhaust fluid. If you want greater performance and protection for your critical engines and equipment, go to Drydeen.com. Drydeen, American owned and operated, and a proud supporter of racing and race fans everywhere. Sage Fruit is a premium grower, packer, and shipper of Washington tree fruit. Apples, pears, and cherries, and it's always an exceptional eating experience, and they're grown in the beautiful Pacific Northwest. High-quality fruit, exceptional flavor, healthy snacking, and they're a longtime supporter of Sprint Cars, Sprint Car Racing, and Wing Nation. Make sure when you go to your local grocery store, ask for Sage Fruit. Wing Nation rolling along, presented by uh, Hercules Tires here. Uh, I, I want to give this one quick mention. Um, I, I, I heard myself, I think it was, talk about the Dry Dean. Uh, Dry Dean is going to also sponsor the Dry Dean 200 Xfinity Series race. They just announced that oh. this morning up at Dover. So it's the Dry Dean 200 and the Dry Dean 400. So uh, tip of the cap to uh, our friends up at Dry Dean, uh, Dave Klinger and everyone, for their continued support of racing and continued support of the Dry Dean Hotline, mm -hmm. which is where we're going because the man who conquered Bristol this weekend joins us, David Gravel's on the line. Hello, David. Welcome back to Wing Nation. What's up, guys? How are you? I am well, David. We have the Knoxville National. We have the majors, and I don't know where Bristol falls in the category, but, uh, boy, I'm telling you, that had to feel like a major league win. It had to be a major league win for you over the course sweeping this weekend. Yeah, it was cool. You know, we've played on the video game. We've watched the videos from back in the day and never thought we would go back there. And now it's a reality, and to, to win both races is very cool. As far as where it ranks, you know, I'm not really sure yet, but uh, I really wish we had no restrictions and we could have 50,000 people there because I think the atmosphere would have been amazing because that, that Coliseum is so cool. David, going into the weekend, there's a lot of talk about safety, about speed. What was it, what was it like overall? Did it compare to another track? Did it feel different? I mean, it sure was fun to watch, but from behind the driver's seat, what was it like? It was very fast, unique. I don't know if you could compare it to anything. You know, there's a lot of banking in the corners. Uh, I think our issue was, you know, getting rained out the week before. And then before then, we're racing at quarter miles and three-eighths miles tracks going way slower than what we were at Bristol. So I felt like on the practice day, it, it was, you know, okay. And maybe we weren't driving that great. But by Sunday, by the end of it, I feel like, Everybody got comfortable, and we raced well together, and, and we actually, you know, and both A-Mains still raced well, but I just feel like we all got better and used to the track and the characteristics and got our cars better. So I wish we raced Devil's Bowl the week before because it would have been a little bit more up to speed, but, uh, you know, why not just throw us in at Bristol? <laughs> well, the practice night couldn't have hurt on that. That's that's a really valid point. How much it, it's it's this is probably more of a Cody call than uh, a Cody question than than David. But from your understanding, were there were there differences, extra bolstering, extra beefing? How much how much effort had to go into these cars just to to make sure you guys maintained a safe uh, condition up there? Yeah, so we didn't beef anything up. Um, really, we just uh, put fresh stuff on the car, uh, make sure everything was new. Um, and, and went through the car with a fine tooth comb, but uh, we just tried to take some downforce out of the car to go fast on such a big track. And um, other than that, not not too much. You know, the, we saw our wing, our sideboard on our wing, maybe starting to separate a little bit to the belly of the wing, and uh, we we put some bracing on it for Sunday night, and it held up. So definitely uh, intense speeds, and, and like Ver Volusia, where max speed of grip and good air is fast for qualifying uh it slows down so much uh throughout the night where bristol kind of maintains nearly the same speed throughout the night so pretty much a 25 lap feature is like 25 qualifying laps so are you pretty much wide open the whole feature 
Yeah, the, on Sunday I was. When I was in the lead on Friday, I slowed the pace down a little bit, and I was in more lap traffic, and it was harder to pass the lap traffic for whatever reason. But uh, to keep up with Logan there uh, on Sunday, I was I was wide open. Wow. wow. 25 laps. That's so cool. Did you breathe at all during that 25 <laughs> laps? I don't breathe or keep my eyes open. I just let the car do the work. Oh, <laughs> When I think of your situation this year, David, uh, you have uh, uh, you're teamed up with Todd Quaring, and Todd's just one of our favorite people in the world. And nothing screams Todd Quaring like high speed badass Bristol. Yeah, it had to be good to deliver those wins to him. Not only to deliver them, but that you could enjoy victory lane with him. That had to be rewarding because Bristol just screams Todd Quaring to me. Yeah, you know, it was great. He made the decision Thursday night after the practice session that he was going to come fly down the next day. So I'm glad he did that. And he had his whole family there and my whole family was there. So it was just, it was an awesome weekend. And, uh, you know, to win on Sunday was really cool. Just, you know, he had to earn it and had to make some moves and make it happen. So it was obviously well worth for him to come and Obviously, for all he does with the showdown coming up and all the money he's paying, he understands the business on the race side, the track side, and uh, kind of all all about it. So uh, it was really cool. When you talk about not knowing where it stacks up with Knoxville, the Kings Royal, all that, you had thirty five thousand dollars in your your pocket. You had your family there, Todd's family there, but you probably had a lot of new race fans. And I know even social media, there was people covering it from all over because it's Bristol dirt, the World of Outlaws. You're going to be faster than the Cup cars. Talk about the attention it, it, it brings to the world of outlaws and were, how are your, your souvenir sales? I'm assuming there's going to be people at Bristol that maybe don't get to usually catch a world of outlaw race. Yeah. I'm like cleaned out of everything. So uh, wow. merchandise sales were, were great. The online sales uh, had a big boost from obviously the success in the weekend. Uh, my social media gained a decent amount of followers. I gained like a thousand subscribers on YouTube. So, no doubt there was lots of eyes on Bristol. I'm um, obviously getting the track record the first day. Uh, it was just probably like a really big buzz on social media for that day. Obviously, Sam has it now, but um, just a lot of buzz about the track. And and I thought the A-Mains were great races, so I think that we put on a good product. You know, maybe the heat races and stuff weren't very good racing, but a lot of times you're going to have that. you got to sacrifice something throughout the night. Rarely from green to checkered, is it a great race throughout the night? Either the track's got to be a little fast in the heat races or or whatever. So it, it was great. Uh, fans were great. Um, I think they said we had like 16,000 people there. Um, wish we could have had more, but uh, merchandise sales were crazy. And I went in the t-shirt trailer on Friday and signed autographs, and that was good. And, uh, you know, it, it was uh, it was a great weekend. Boy, I'll tell you what, it sounds like it, that's for sure, and uh, really, really neat. I know we have some video stuff that uh, that uh, Kevin Striegel put together and uh, for us, and uh, I know you really are capitalizing on it. Um, your, your YouTube, you said you gained 1,000 people on your YouTube channel. That is a That, to me, seems like a monumental jump. Yeah, that's a big deal. I probably gain around 100 to 200 a month, uh, typically, so... Uh, yeah, we gained like a thousand in, in three days. So it was, uh, definitely a huge jump, which was cool. It kind of got stale there and I had, you know, Kevin there and Carter and, and DB three and Cameron Stage all there helping me out. And, uh, we put some really cool videos together each day. And I think that was kind of the game changer was to post videos right after the night was over and have three uh right away when everybody was all hot and bothered about it so uh, without those guys my stuff wouldn't look cool uh, i'm just the one behind the wheel I, I have to agree even for me social media wise if i see something that's relevant right away i'm more apt to click on it than if it's two days out you're right to have that ability to do that is huge david going back to the the qualifying the speed your track record that you had for uh what 48 hours maybe does it, did anyone clock a top speed? You know, we talked a lot about the average speed being, uh, I think, 142 or whatever Sam, Sam Hifertib's lap was. But did anyone get a top speed? No, I, I don't know why. Uh, nobody brought a radar gun. There was plenty of cops there, but <laughs> I wish somebody had a radar gun. Me too. Um, as far as top speed, I'm not sure. I'm going to say it would probably be in the 160s would be my guess. Um, I don't know if Sam's lap maybe 
tickled with 170s, but I'm not sure. Um, you know, we are a half a tenth off of him, but um, I'm not sure. I, I really wish we knew. I thought the rumor was like Sammy's track record. He was doing 160 or 170 uh, in 01. So I truly don't know. Um, but if whatever Sammy was going top speed, I'm, I would say we went a faster top speed as well. Mm. Man, I'll tell you what, it is special. That is for sure. When you look at where you're at now, life goes on after Bristol. Uh, they're digging up the dirt there to make it a concrete track again. Uh, you've got Jacksonville and I-70 this weekend. Um, kind of assess the, uh, the, the, the first portion of your season, uh, the good, the bad, uh, and, and, and how things have been for you across the board. Obviously, an exclamation point with Bristol, but, but how have things been for you and Cody on the tour thus far this year? Yeah, you know, it's a work in progress. I mean, when you switch drivers and teams and Cody is the only same piece to the puzzle from last year, you know, we have a, a new car chief in Trey Bowman and a tire guy and, and Scotty Vogelson and, and me at the driver. So uh, there's a lot of new pieces. I feel like we all get along really well. I feel like our qualifying program's pretty strong, especially on the big tracks. Um, but I thought, we, we've been fairly average. I feel like we haven't made any big mistakes other than what I did at, at Kokomo. Um, it, you take that away, you know, we've been decent, but we had one podium going into the weekend and that was a win at the Rev. So I feel a lot of other people had way more podiums than I have. And obviously Brad's consistency was second to none. So to sweep the weekend kind of puts us in the mix of things and, you know, if you look second through eighth in points, I mean, it's going to be a battle all season long. I think Logan's seventh right now and, and Donnie's eighth or something like that, and, and it's really tight. So there's eight good cars every single night that could win no problem, and it's just going to be a battle all year. So it's a long season, but I would say our season was average uh, going into Bristol, and uh, obviously that boosted up quite a bit. And we're just going to keep working and trying to be consistent. And, Go from there. David, you're talking about just kind of coming together and you're, you know, part of the way through the season and you guys are still pretty all new together. Um, obviously a very successful weekend, but you've had the chance to work with some of the best crew chiefs out there. I mean, going way back, but even, you know, Barry Jackson and Philip Dietz now working with Cody. Are there similarities between the crew chiefs, uh, different styles? Like how is that to adjust to a new crew chief having, having the success in, having as much experience as you have now. Yeah, you know, Barry Jackson was an intense guy, and then you had Philip Dietz was the most chill person and never got excited, even if we won the Knoxville Nationals. And I would say Cody's kind of like in between. You know, um, he gets excited sometimes, and most of the time he's pretty laid back and chill. So pretty much me and him have to just learn each other and uh, just just kind of – dilute what what I'm saying and trying to get to how I'm feeling and, and how we make the car better and, and try to find a baseline that works for me. And, you know, I think we've made strides over the last couple of weeks. So hopefully we could get racing and, you know, we got a lot of racing coming up and hopefully mother nature doesn't mess that up and we could just continue to get better uh, as a team. Final question for you. Everything good in Florida with, uh, with, with, with married life, with the Mustang, with all of that? Is uh, Florida still treating you well? Yeah, it's doing good. So uh, I'm going to fly home after this coming weekend. And then after that, it probably won't be Florida for a while because we get busy. But, yeah, I just, I just purchased a diesel pickup truck uh, for my T-shirt trailer I'm going to be picking up here in a few weeks. So. I'll be able to debut uh, my t-shirt trailer for the month of money and all those things, so I'm excited about that. But the Mustang's doing great. Uh, it's all tuned up and ready to go. It's in the best place it's ever been, ready for me to beat the crap out of it this off season at the drag strip, so I'm excited about that. But uh, everything's good. Jill was there this weekend at Bristol. She's working today uh, delivering babies, and uh, everything is good. Wow. That is good. I'm glad to hear that. Always love seeing your smiling face in victory lane or on a wing after winning, especially after a big one like Bristol. David, it's always a pleasure to uh, chat with you. Uh, I'll look forward. I'll actually see you Friday night out at uh, out at Lakeside, looking forward to, or out at um, I-70, looking forward to that. But uh, appreciate you joining us here on Wing Nation. 
Yeah, thank you guys. Are you guys coming out to the showdown or the Jackson Nationals for the end of the week? Oh, I know you guys usually do. We're doing both. Uh, yeah, Todd awesome. and those guys are having us up. Um, they're doing um, what it's going to be is um, Ashley and I are doing Houston's and it's a uh, girls weekend Aaron and Ashley doing oh, yeah. the Jackson Nationals cuz I got to go to my <laughs> real job so uh but we're going to be up oh, there wow. all week we're going to do the hauler parade we're going to uh we're that's going to be an awesome week the showdown week is going to be spectacular cool yeah there's a lot of money on the line so uh he's trying to build it up i mean for a guy to own two racetracks and a world of all out team is is cool we need pe- more people like Todd and uh you know he, he's up there with with Tony Stewart and with the sport, you know, I feel like he's continuing to grow and have uh, more and more involvement in sprint car racing. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And everything he touches is top shelf from your Absolutely. race team to, to what he's done at Jackson to what he's doing at Houston. You're right. It is. It's it's good to have people invest, but people with passion and, and they want the nth degree. So it is good. So looking forward to all of that, David. Again, thanks for the time. Yeah. Thank you guys for having me. And uh, we'll see you soon. There we go. David Gravel joining us here on uh Man, I'll tell you what, on Wing Nation, isn't that cool? Yeah. I'll tell you what, that guy can wheel a car, can't yes, he? Yes, sweep a weekend he at Bristol. A, I'm a, sure he gained some new fans. He, he ain't scared of it. Boy, I, he said a, a month we get 100 to 200 fans, and three days he got 1,000 new people on YouTube. And his merchandise trailer was wiped out. Wiped out. Good stuff. Love it. Love it. Good chatting. day to be. Yes, good day to be David Gravel. Yeah. That's for sure. Citywide to countryside, whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules has the value, selection, and industry-leading warranty to get you there, no matter where the road takes you. Go to HerculesTires.com. There you can find the nearest authorized Hercules retail location to you. Plus, you can use the tire tracker to find out which Hercules tire fits your vehicle the best. That's HerculesTires.com. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Over 200 events from coast to coast, and they're celebrating 30 years of scattering soil. The American Sprint Car Series, the world's largest sprint car sanctioning body, is bringing more thrills with wing and even more non-wing action in 2021. 11 regional tours, the national tour. No matter where you are, we're coming to a track near you. you can be there. Get double the streaming fun with Racing Boys and FullRacing.com, bringing all the adrenaline to your favorite streaming device. See the full lineup of this now at ASCSRacing.com. Just like racing components, Aggressive Hydraulics purpose builds hydraulic cylinders to perform for customer specific applications. They design and manufacture multi style single stage cylinders as well as multi stage telescopic cylinders. And it's a no one size fits all approach with Aggressive Hydraulics. Hydraulic solutions for virtually every industry that uses hydraulic cylinders. They proudly design and manufacture all cylinders in the United States. Check out the video of their story at AggressiveHydraulics.com. You know, David mentioned the showdown, okay? And we all kind of chit-chat around here like we all understand it, but maybe you're not yeah. familiar with it. Uh, the showdown is a pair of World of Outlaw, not weekends, it's a week of World of Outlaw racing. On Monday and Tuesday, the 21st and 22nd of June, they're at the Houston Speedway for the Houston's 50. Yep. And then Wednesday night... There's a hauler parade from Houston's to Jackson, which is a different state, but not too far away. I don't know what it is, 30, 40 miles, maybe? It's not too bad. It's not too bad. And then Thursday night, the Jackson Nationals, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Oh, yeah. So I'm telling you, folks, if you're looking for a weekend or week of sprint car racing, uh, the showdown up in the uh, and that time of year was beautiful up there. Perfect. South Dakota? South Dakota and and Minnesota. And that racetrack, Houston's? I cannot wait. I've never been there before. Ugh, I am so favorites. fired up really? about Houston's and then um, Jackson's and, just beautiful. And Jackson's just like, spectacular. Houston's got some good history too. And... Oh man, I can't wait to get there. That's for sure. Great stuff. Hey, you know what else is great stuff? When I am, uh, what was Friday night? I was at um, Talladega Short Track USCS. Okay, so I'm minding my own business, but I go up. You're minding well, your own business. Yes. I go up while um, while one of the four different late model divisions is racing their race, and I jump on Twitter, and I see Lucas Wolf smiling face in victory lane at Williams Grove. That's a good thing. That was good. And he joins us now on the Dry Dean Hotline. Hello, Lucas. Welcome back to Wing Nation. Hi, guys. How are you? I am well. While I got a good kick out of seeing your smiling face in victory lane at Williams Grove, I've got to think you were probably even happier than that. Congratulations, and uh, had to feel good to get back to victory lane at the Grove. 
Well, yeah, thank you for sure. It was uh, it was definitely a uh, a big night for me. It was good to uh, to regain uh, a good result uh, as well as uh, pick up uh, any win at uh, Williams Grove is tough. So uh, all things considered, but for me, uh, after a bit of a drought, for sure, it was good to uh, good to have a win, and uh, especially uh, early uh, earlier in the season as well as with uh, the Jim and Laura Allabach 5W. So a lot of uh, lot of good positives for me on Friday night. Lucas, your comments in Victory Lane to me were just really fascinating. You talked about about this drought that you've had, but you said, you know, coming back from that injury in 2019, you just haven't been able to get the right feel, I think, and you said something about you're hesitant to even trust your own instincts. Talk about uh, what a driver goes through mentally, the psychology of coming back from, from an injury and then not to have that confidence. That's that's not an easy thing to get past and get back to victory lane with. Well, no, certainly I think uh, you can look through you know the history of of all racing, certainly sprint car racing, and as well as the the group of of current drivers. It's easy to uh, or relatively easy to, to pick to the ones that seem to be uh, really on point mentally and, and good, make good selection, good line selections at the right time. You know, there's just a certain a certain gift, I guess, so to speak, of, of guys that seem to be ultra talented at uh, at doing it. Uh, you know, for me, over the course of my career, I've had stretches where you almost seemingly can do no wrong, and then, of course, other times where it's, it's hard to to get anything to go right. So, ultimately, the the barometer seems to be results, and that's something that I've certainly struggled with uh, over the last little bit of time. So, when when you're not finding good results. A lot of times you probably question or, or overanalyze a lot of the, the moves and decisions that you make uh, after the fact and kind of uh, debriefing and, and running the, the races and events back through your mind. So at, at this point, I'm, I'm certainly in a uh, not as strong as I'd like to be a position where uh, I, I have a, a little bit of lack of faith in, in some of the different things that I do, uh, mainly, I, I think, due to uh, struggling and lack of results. So. Yeah, leading a race like that is certainly, uh, I would never be able to say that that's the, uh, the a wrong place to be for any reason, but it is a, a little bit of a, a challenge, especially when you, you don't have much to gauge off of in terms of lap traffic or, or even other cars that you're, you're racing around. Uh, it gives you a little bit of, a, of an isolated on an island type feeling. But fortunately for me, I was able to, uh, to, to maintain a good pace and uh, stay out front and ultimately come away with the victory. When you're in a season of life like this, where you're, you have that hesitancy and, and hesitancy and sprint car driver, they don't seem to work well together where you, where you're in this point and you, you've acknowledged this is really the only option. Just keep going, keep digging there. There's, there's not a, is, is there anything else you can do other than just, just, just keep swinging for the fences and finally, finally knock one out like you did on Friday night. Well, I mean, it certainly helps. I mean, the reality is I, I have uh, a lot of, you know, a lot to do in terms of, of regaining pace, uh, continued growth, improvement. And that, that extends to, to every aspect. Certainly me as a driver, uh, my, my, uh, the quality of my feedback to the people involved in working on the car uh, are, are dynamic throughout the week as, you know, success seems to breed further success, you, you get a little bit of uh, momentum going uh, personally, which, which is good. And I think that vibe carries over to, uh, to all uh, facets and aspects of the team. So th- those are all very critical. And I, I think a lot of times often probably overlooked aspects of what uh, some of the things that it takes to be successful doing this, especially in this uh, current time, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of big races uh, similar to what you mentioned just before you, you brought me on uh, throughout uh, all over the country. Uh, it seems to be uh, certainly increased uh, depth of field, uh, very, very competitive uh, teams, drivers, events. And uh, I think uh, more so than ever, you really have to be on point with uh, with all of your programs. So I, hopefully uh, a move in the right direction for me, but uh, certainly the reality is uh, uh, quite a few steps to go moving forward. Going back to your last answer, you talked about how being the lead is where obviously you want to be, but with that is a little bit of isolation. And when you're not trusting your instincts, it's a little bit scary. And I think you talked about during the race, you thought about maybe moving down in three and four, um, but didn't entrust your instincts. And I think you maybe had a restart. 
And another point you said you felt like you had the right speed at the end of the race and you were good. How at that point did you know in your instincts that you had enough speed when you are leading? Is it a feel? Is it just experience at Williams Grove that you know you're good enough where you are? Well, typically speaking, I, I think over the course of my career, Williams Grove is probably the track that I have the most uh, or, or the highest level of comfort at due to, you know, experience, success, uh, just uh, a, a long time and a lot of laps there. Uh, but it's also one of those places that uh, certainly can change in a hurry. Uh, a lot of times the end of races uh, there, the, the bottoms can get uh, going better. Uh, some of the guys that uh, that are racing right now are really good at uh, hitting the bottom right the last uh, the, the last half or third of a race. Uh, ultimately, catching I was catching the back of traffic uh, through, kind of through the midway point. Of, of course, the the track dirties up a little bit. You, you catch some of the, the disturbance off the cars in front of you, which is is not something you face as the leader, of course. And uh, sometimes it feels like the pace is struggling a bit. Of course, you, you know, you kind of get into moving the wing around, just trying to find the right balance and see about uh, m- making up as much ground as you can. I, I certainly got to a spot where I thought I was stalling a bit, and, and that was creating some concern. And uh, I, I think I was at a spot where I, I needed to, to make a change and uh, and move around a little bit to try to uh, j- just uh, cover my bases, I guess. But fortunately, then the, the, with the yellow coming out, then it's, it's almost like a uh, um, you know like a weight lifted off of you because then you get clean track again uh, as, as the fuel load goes out of it. You know, really the car handled better. So I actually found the good fortune of probably feeling the best. The best I did the whole race was on the last uh, last six laps after the, the final uh, caution period. So it was a uh, a good feel that way to, to feel that because as the, as the of course as the race goes on. Some of the guys coming up through the field that are operating pretty good or, or getting closer to you, and sometimes that's a uh, a little bit of a bad scenario if you have a, a little bit of a gap build up that you you give it up that that close to the end. But ultimately, uh, again, it worked out good for me. It was a good a good boost in, in a lot of different ways, and uh, something that's crucial for me to, uh, to to seize upon and carry over into uh, the, the balance of the season. Lucas, you've kind of been in a similar situation in the past where you're you're running a pair of different cars. Uh, you mentioned this weekend the win was with the all-back the 5W car, but uh, you have the fortune of, uh, the good fortune of driving for Mark Cauldron in the 07 for the All-Star Tour. Um, are they similar cars? At, 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 in the past, at times, you even had both cars in the same shop. How do, how do those two programs line up with each other? Well, with, with the exception of personnel, the the teams are are virtually uh, not not uh, not really anything uh, the same. Which there's uh, in my experience of of doing it a handful to- of times, especially over the last uh, ten years or so. There's uh, there's some goods and bads to, to all aspects of it. Of course, I think ultimately for me, the consistency from a personnel standpoint is a good value. And uh, moving forward, you can still I think try to maximize your strengths and, and of course minimize some of the stuff that you're doing wrong. But good consistency that way is a value. But we we certainly have a, a big schedule coming up here. The All Stars are going to kick up uh, soon to uh, quite a few races, uh, certainly more frequent and uh, some incredibly uh, big and uh, lucrative weekends. So certainly hopeful that we're able to find a little bit better pace. We struggle to have consistency with uh, with the Cauldron team and, and with the All Stars, but we're still uh, pretty new. Of course, when I run the 5W, that's uh, uh, a lot of familiarity to me personally. So there's probably a greater level of comfort and a little bit more to uh, to fall back upon. The uh, the whole relationship with Mark and, and his team is, is relatively new. So hopefully we'll be able to uh, get a little bit of consistency there and be able to uh, to factor in, in the, the next few weeks and, of course, uh, ultimately the whole championship. Lucas, we've had all this conversation about confidence and feeling good in the car. You know, we're not too far into the season. This win seems to fall at a really good spot. As you mentioned, things are about to pick up. That that certainly has to help momentum. Well, absolutely. I, I don't think you can get wins uh, soon enough or early enough in the year for uh, for any driver. I've had uh, the last handful of years uh, going back, I've had some early season wins, which are, are definitely big uh, for everything. Certainly team morale and team focus and just confidence in what you're doing 
is a good deal because, as you know, a lot of times over the winter you come up with an awful lot of ideas, and uh, they don't always work out quite as well as you had them drawn up. So it's good to uh, to, to justify and put some uh, put some faith in some of those decisions and things that you worked on throughout the winter. And of course, once the uh, once the season gets going, it uh, especially if you find some struggles, it's good to be able to kind of fall back upon or or rely on something that you found success with uh, previously in the season. So a good a good all around or a great all around weekend for me for sure. Just got some clean running and made some good laps and. Uh, Certainly, a, a victory uh, is, is hard to uh, hard to express the, the value in that for me personally. Yeah, it is. It is really neat. Uh, that's that's awesome, and we certainly uh, hope to see your smiling face in Victor Lane multiple times over the course of the next few months. So, Lucas, we always appreciate the time. Great to chat with you at the track, and great to chat with you here uh, in uh, in the in the studio. We appreciate the time, and uh, best of luck this weekend and on throughout. Well, thanks. Sounds good, guys. All the best. There we go. Lucas Wolf joining us on the Dry Dean Hotline. I love the, I love the, over the off season, we tend to come up with a lot of things and sometimes they don't work out. Boy, how many times has that happened yeah. in racing? Every Every spring. year, every team, every <laughs> yeah. spring. It seems like, yeah. you know, you give racers a little downtime and they'll overthink something. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And then, and then you'll hear the, we went back to the basics. Yep. Uh, how did you win that race last week? We went back to the basics. Yeah, we went back to what we know. Yep. So the non-racer radio guy in me is like, why don't we just stick to the basics? That's not a racer mentality. Yeah, yeah, you know, no. Because no faster, one else is sticking faster, to the faster. basics. Faster, faster, faster. That's for sure. Sunoco is a proud partner of Wing Nation. Not all fuels are created equal, so fill up with Sunoco Ultratech. Sunoco Ultratech is a top-tier detergent gasoline that is proven to make your engine run cleaner, longer, and more efficiently. Using the same detergent package as what is blended into some of Sunoco's high-performance race fuels, you can trust Ultratech for your everyday race. Whether you're headed to the track or just hitting the road, fill up with Sunoco Ultratech and fuel your best. Circle B Diecast is the new diecast outlet from Plan B Sales. What started as Lionel and Chase Authentics Apparel Distributor has grown into the largest distributor of diecast and now includes Auto World Greenlight Collectibles, Brand Art, Sam Bass Artwork, and University of Racing Lines. They have a huge inventory. The folks at Circle B Diecast love racing and support drivers like Kyle Larson, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Christopher Bell, and many others with sponsorships and partnerships. And on orders over $20, use promo code MRN for free shipping. Check them out, circlebdiecast.com. Sage Fruit has been a longtime supporter of sprint car racing, sprint car fans, and us here at Wing Nation. What they pride themselves on most is providing shoppers with the highest quality, best tasting apples, pears, and cherries available. Go to sagefruit.com and make sure you ask your local grocer for Sage Fruit. So this morning as I'm making show notes, I got to the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame birthday calendar. And our birthday honoree got me thinking. And so I jumped online. And I got my hotel rooms lined up for the double-double ah. uh, double Kings Royal double-double header double-double weekend. <laughs> so um, I got my uh, hotels lined up for the Kings Royal. Wow. You've got, got a lot of races going. Oh, hashtag year. Sprint Car Summer is going to be epic this year. Oh, wow. Epic. We got our own this hashtag. Epic. I got my hashtag Sprint Car Summer. Wow. Oh, this is going to be big. This is going to be big. Um, and so, uh, and so, like I said, I made the notes this morning and I'm like, there's, there, you know, you're driving around. It's like, I got to think about Eldora hotel rooms. I got to think about my, where I'm going with ASCS the one weekend. And I mean, all of this, and it's like all these little pieces and I'm the world's worst that like it's 10 days out. Or it's, it's a week out. It's like, yeah. oh crap, I didn't do that. So I'm doing the birthday calendar and I'm like, I got to get my Eldora rooms, go on there, Google it up, find a room at a really good price at a really good location. Boom. It's mine. I got it. It's all done. The, the reason I say that and talk about Eldora is today uh, would have been the birthday of Earl Baltus, the 1994 inductee into the Sprint Car Hall of Fame, born in 1921 to a family of musicians. Earl played guitar and saxophone and founded and started an eight-piece band called Earl and His Melody Makers. Built an Eldora ballroom in 1952. He carved out a speedway near that Eldora ballroom. The ballroom is still there, but mm -hmm. not nearly as active with eight-piece bands. The racetrack is epic, in a word, and known for big events. 
The USAC Four Crown, the King's Royal, the Historical Big One, the Mopar Million, the Eldora Million, the Dream, the World 100, all products of Earl Baltus mm -hmm. and his beloved Eldora Speedway. And as big and bold as he was with promotions, he was as small and diminutive, but big personalities oh, yeah. as a person. A great, great person. A character is how you can describe mm -hmm. him. Just a great guy. He was. And I had the honor of getting to know him a little bit. And I still have a picture. His hat was flipped up and my hat was flipped up. It was just really neat to get to know him and Bernice. My favorite when he did the uh, Mopar Million, the first million dollar to yeah. win race. He announced it in Daytona at the Promoters Summit or something. He announced it down there. And someone asks, what did Bernice think of this idea? And his answer, I laugh to this day. She doesn't care what I do as long as I don't make an ass of myself. That's, that's a great, I mean, that's a great right there. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's husband and wife marriage counseling. I yeah. don't care what you do. Just don't make an ass of yourself. Yeah. That is great counseling there. And she was just a, as much of a part of the whole deal. Oh my like gosh, she was yes. always involved. She just passed away yeah, this year, did. earlier this year. Yep. So um, neat, neat folks. And, and, and next week, they open up after 20 Oof, months yeah. of no fans. They've got the uh, the normal double double. Yep. Everything this year is double double. Double double World One Hundred. Double double Dream. Got to make double, up for last double, year. Double double Kings Royal. Yep. Okay. Their original double, the Let's Race Two, is just normal. That's next weekend. It's USAC Sprints and World of Outlaw Sprints. Double yeah. two shows, two weekends. But um, so Earl Baltus' birthday today, or would have been today, um, and he passed away in 2015. Uh, Thursday, um, Louis Rusty Espinosa and Ed Shepard and Sam Trailer. Uh, birthday on Sunday. The National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum, you know, we talk about all of the big things they have coming. You can be a member for only $25, supporting member of the museum for the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum. Yep, you get free admission to the museum and 10% discount on museum store merchandise. And they have a great store. They do have a great store. WW dot sprintcarhof.com sprintcarhof.com if you want to go to their online store it's www.sprintcarstuff.com and if you want to buy things for a host of wing nation you can go on there as well because i love that store sprintcarstuff.com so um neat catching up with uh, lucas wolf yeah um i was enjoying my chats with lucas in the pits um and it'd been a dry spell and it was good to see him back in victory lane and then gravel, just what an animal he yeah, is behind the wheel. He really car. is. He's, and, you know, going back to Lucas, I feel like the last few weeks we've talked to a lot of drivers about the psychology of the sport. And, and, you know, we've always talked about it, but I feel like drivers have been more closed about it. You know, yeah, I got to get my confidence back up. But this year, between Logan Wagner and some of the other drivers Logan we've had Wagner on. Logan Wagner blew me away last yeah, week. Yeah, people are really starting to analyze more of, of the mental game. part of the game. Yeah. Yeah. I'll go back. I'll go back to um, something, uh, and and again, it's NASCAR related. Um, when Jimmy Johnson was in the middle of his stretch, I interviewed Mark Martin, and Mark was the first guy that brought fitness into mm -hmm. the sport, and Mark was really into that. And everyone's kind of like, "Well, why does?" And, and Mark had just gone to Hendrick Motorsports, yeah. So it's like, "What do you see in Jimmy?" And Mark said, "This is the easiest thing in the world." He's better than all of us in every facet of his game because he works in every facet yeah. of his game. Jimmy Johnson knew every ounce of food that he ate and every ounce of energy that he exercised and worked on. He worked on his mental game, his mind game, so that when whether a race car, you're plugging parts into a race car. That's all you're doing. You're putting tires on it. You're dropping a motor into it. You're plugging a driver in. And that, that motor's got to be finely tuned. That yep. rear end's got to be finely tuned. That tire has got to be aired up to the right thing. Yeah. That shock has got to be perfect. And what we've learned as competitive as it is right now, that driver's got to be yeah, perfect, Yeah, listening too. to Justin Peck talking about analyzing Justin videos. Peck drivers last yeah. year were talking about watching old film. Like, it's, yeah. it's gotten interesting to me that our sports at that level is so competitive now that we are truly analyzing. Logan and, Wagner blew me yeah. away because I'm a, I'm a mind person. Him talking about visualizing yeah. winning races, and he blew me away because I'm, I just, I'm like, I'm I'm in the I'm in the I'm in the front row of the congregation yeah. on that one. Mm -hmm. I mean I'm just I'm I'm Amen preach it brother. That's yep. what I am. So it is neat. So great uh, great to see uh, Lucas uh, starting to get his game back and uh, David's game never left. Uh, he's just he's incredible. It really is. So um, there you have it. Uh, coming up later this week on our podcast, uh, Brent Marks. Lots of changes yeah. there. 
Uh, we have a great, great visit coming up with Brent Marks. Um, just neat stuff. Looking forward to seeing what's going on in his world. And I uh, need to remind you before we get into the closing billboards of this show that Wing Nation Apparel is available on the All-Star Circuit of Champions trailer, our 10th anniversary stuff this weekend in Winston, Pennsylvania, or you can get it at www.wingnation.com. Finally this week, we wrap it up with Wing Nation, our television program presented by Sage Fruit. DJ Neto talking California yeah. sprint car racing. Caught him in between harvest. Oh. Oh, they're harvesting crops out there like you wouldn't believe. So uh, you can catch that Wednesday night on Rev TV in Canada and here in the States on Mav TV. Again, we appreciate David Gravel and Lucas Wolf for joining us, but more important than all of that, thank you for joining us here on Wing Nation presented by Hercules Tires.